Welcome to Saving Castles, the podcast for castle and chateau enthusiasts. Join us as we explore the fascinating history, stories and culture of these awe-inspiring structures, from the legends and folklore to the latest in restoration. We'll cover it all, so whether you're a seasoned castle aficionado or just discovering the magic of these magnificent buildings, this is the podcast for you. So grab your headphones and let's dive in. Welcome, castle enthusiasts, to the Saving Castles podcast. Our aim is to transport you through time, weaving tales of historical castles and the fascinating events that transpired within their walls. I'm your host, and in this episode, we'll delve deep into the heart of the 13th century, exploring the incredible story of the Great Siege of 1216. Dover Castle, a formidable fortress, stood defiant against an invading force, and its defenders became the stuff of legend. In this episode, we'll guide you through the history, intrigue, and drama that unfolded during the siege. We'll examine the key players and their motives, explore the strategic importance of Dover Castle, and reveal the determined men who held it against all odds. Along the way, we'll paint a vivid picture of life during this tumultuous time, and immerse you in a tale of struggle, endurance, and resilience. Join us now as we embark on this unforgettable journey. In 1216, England was a realm teetering on the brink of chaos. King John, an unpopular and distrusted ruler, found himself beset on all sides by conflict and rebellion. His reign had been marred by missteps, including the loss of Normandy, a crushing defeat by the French, and the imposition of crippling taxes upon his subjects. As discontent grew, tensions came to a head in 1215 with the signing of the Magna Carta. The Magna Carta, a charter of liberties agreed to by King John in a bid to appease his rebellious barons, promised to curb the king's power and protect the rights of his subjects. Yet mere months after signing the document, John sought to undermine its provisions, enraging the barons and sparking a full-scale rebellion. Desperate for support, the barons turned to a powerful ally, Prince Louis of France, a claimant to the English throne. Meanwhile, the people of England found themselves caught in the crossfire of this escalating conflict, unsure of what the future might hold. It was in this climate of uncertainty and danger that the stage was set for the great siege of 1216, a turning point in the struggle for power in medieval England. Dover Castle, known as the key to England, was an imposing fortress perched atop the white cliffs of Dover, its strategic position overlooking the shortest sea crossing between England and the European continent made it an invaluable prize for any would-be invader. Recognising this, King John had invested heavily in the castle's fortifications, transforming it into an impregnable bastion capable of withstanding even the most formidable assault. The castle's defences a testament to the ingenuity and skill of medieval engineers, featured towering walls, a complex system of gates, and a network of defensive tunnels. The centrepiece of the castle was the Great Keep, a massive multi-storied tower built by King Henry II in the 1180s. This imposing structure would play a critical role during the Great Siege of 1216, providing refuge for the defenders as they sought to repel the French forces. Under the stewardship of Hubert de Burgh, the castle's constable, a small but resolute garrison, prepared for the inevitable attack. De Burgh, a seasoned warrior, recognised the significance of Dover Castle in the broader struggle for control of England, and he spared no effort in strengthening its defences and preparing his men for the battle to come. On May 21st, 1216, Prince Louis of France landed on English shores, intent on seizing the crown for himself. Accompanying him was a formidable army, composed of seasoned French soldiers, Flemish mercenaries, and disgruntled English barons eager to depose King John. 
This alliance, fueled by a shared desire for change and an unyielding thirst for power, sought to exploit the unrest in England and force a new order upon its people. Their first target, the strategically vital castle of Rochester, fell quickly to the invaders. With this victory, the path to Dover Castle lay open, and Prince Louis marched south, determined to secure this key stronghold. The capture of Dover Castle was a necessary step in his quest for the English throne, for its possession would not only provide a secure base for his operations, but also send a powerful message to his rivals. Resistance was futile. As Prince Louis and his army drew near, the garrison of Dover Castle braced for the storm that was to come. Under the stalwart leadership of Hubert de Burge, these men, fiercely loyal to their embattled king, were prepared to face overwhelming odds in defence of their homeland. Despite being vastly outnumbered, they were undeterred, for they believed that their cause was just and that their fortress would hold. Within the castle's walls, knights and foot soldiers, craftsmen and labourers, stood shoulder to shoulder, united in their determination to repel the invaders. Their faith in their cause was unwavering. These men, each with their own story and reason for taking up arms, would come to define the spirit of defiance that characterised the great siege of 1216. The siege of Dover Castle began in earnest on July 19th, 1216, as Prince Louis's forces laid siege to the fortress. This relentless assault would continue for months, a brutal and harrowing ordeal for both the attackers and the defenders. Employing a range of siege engines, including trebuchets, battering rams, and the fearsome fat boy, a massive catapult capable of hurling boulders weighing hundreds of pounds, the French forces subjected the castle's walls to a devastating barrage. Day after day, night after night, the defenders of Dover Castle clung to their posts, repairing damage, repelling assaults, and doing whatever was necessary to hold the line. They fought in the pouring rain, through the chill of winter, and under the relentless summer sun. Their resilience and tenacity in the face of this onslaught became the stuff of legend, as they withstood wave after wave of attacks. At the heart of their resistance was Hubert de Burr, the constable of Dover Castle. De Burr's unwavering commitment to the defence of the fortress, along with his tactical acumen and inspiring leadership, was a critical factor in the garrison's ability to hold out against the seemingly insurmountable odds. As the siege wore on, the French forces, employing every weapon in their arsenal, finally managed to breach the castle's outer wall. In a daring nighttime assault, the invaders poured into the bailey, the open courtyard within the castle's fortifications, and threatened to overrun the entire fortress. The defenders, now facing the enemy within their own walls, were forced to retreat to the keep, a massive central tower that served as the last bastion of defence. The keep, its thick walls and fortified entrance, now stood between the invaders and total victory. In these desperate circumstances, the defenders, under the steadfast leadership of Hubert de Burge, rallied and prepared for the fight of their lives. With the odds stacked against them, they mustered every ounce of courage and determination they could find, drawing upon their camaraderie and shared sense of purpose, to keep the invaders at bay. The ensuing struggle within the castle was intense and brutal, as both sides engaged in fierce hand-to-hand -hand combat, fighting for every inch of ground. Arrows flew, swords clashed, and the air was filled with the deafening sounds of battle. Amidst the chaos, the defenders of Dover Castle refused to yield, their spirits unbroken even as they were pushed to the brink of exhaustion. Despite the ferocity of the invaders' onslaught, the defenders, through a combination of unyielding resolve and tenacious counter-attacks, managed to hold the line. This incredible stand, a testament to their resilience and determination, would come to define the spirit of defiance that characterized the great siege of 1216. While the siege of Dover Castle raged on, England found itself engulfed in a wider conflict 
with the country's future hanging in the balance. The rebellion of the barons had fractured the nation, pitting neighbours and families against one another. As loyalties were divided, battles and skirmishes erupted across the land, as both King John's forces and Prince Louis's supporters sought to impose their will upon a beleaguered populace. Throughout this tumultuous period, the defenders of Dover Castle became a beacon of hope for those who remained loyal to the crown. Their fierce resistance, despite the seemingly insurmountable odds, served as an inspiring example of the indomitable spirit of the English people. As news of their valiant stand spread, it boasted the morale of the royalists and provided a rallying point for their cause. Yet, Despite this, the situation remained dire for King John and his supporters. With his realm crumbling around him, the embattled monarch found himself increasingly isolated and vulnerable, struggling to marshal the resources needed to counter the French invasion. In these desperate circumstances, the steadfast defence of Dover Castle took on even greater significance, as its survival was crucial to any hope of turning the tide against the invaders. The months, long siege of Dover Castle placed an immense strain on both the defenders and the attackers, pushing them to the limits of their endurance. As supplies dwindled and conditions worsened, the men on both sides found themselves grappling not only with their adversaries, but also with hunger, disease, and the crushing weight of despair. Faced with these hardships, the besieged garrison and the French forces alike resorted to increasingly desperate measures in their struggle for victory. The invaders, for instance, made numerous attempts to tunnel beneath the castle's walls, hoping to exploit any weakness in the fortifications and gain entry to the stronghold. In response, the defenders devised ingenious countermeasures, collapsing these tunnels and effectively tapping the enemy within. Meanwhile, within the castle, the garrison laboured tirelessly to maintain their defences, working around the clock to repair damaged walls, construct makeshift barriers, and create deadly traps for any invaders who might breach their stronghold. Their ingenuity and resourcefulness, born out of necessity, played a crucial role in their ability to withstand the relentless assault from the French forces. In the midst of the prolonged and brutal siege, a momentous event occurred that would ultimately tip the scales in favour of the beleaguered defenders, the death of King John. On October 18th, 1216, the much maligned monarch succumbed to illness, leaving his throne and his realm in a precarious state. The passing of King John, however, would also prove to be the catalyst for a profound shift in the fortunes of the besieged defenders. The English barons, who had sided with Prince Louis, now bereft of their primary reason for rebellion, found themselves in a quandary. Many began to question their allegiances and the wisdom of supporting a foreign invader. Ultimately, a significant number of these barons chose to abandon their alliance with Louis and rally behind the nine-year-old son of King John, who was crowned King Henry III. This development had far-reaching consequences for the wider conflict, as the tide of public opinion began to turn against the French invaders. Support for Prince Louis and his claim to the English throne began to wane, and with it his prospects for victory. As the struggle for control of Dover Castle dragged on, a critical development unfolded that would profoundly impact the course of the siege, the arrival of reinforcements. The defenders, their numbers depleted and resources strained, had long been in desperate need of aid, and now it seemed their prayers had been answered. In November 1216, a fleet of ships bearing fresh troops and vital supplies sailed into the harbour of Dover, having successfully evaded the French blockade. These reinforcements, under the command of the Earl of Salisbury, brought with them new hope and a renewed determination to stand firm against the invaders. With their arrival, the tide of the siege began to turn, and the defenders' prospects for survival improved dramatically. The French forces, faced with this unexpected development, and now increasingly on the back foot, found their resolve wavering. 
Their protracted campaign, already marked by setbacks and mounting casualties, was beginning to take its toll, and the once unstoppable momentum of their invasion seemed to be faltering. In December 1216, after months of bitter struggle, the siege of Dover Castle finally reached its conclusion. The French forces, their numbers depleted, their spirits broken, and their cause in disarray, finally withdrew, leaving the battered but unbowed defenders victorious. The breaking of the siege marked a triumphant moment for the men who had fought so valiantly to defend their fortress, their king, and their country. Their resilience and determination, in the face of overwhelming odds, had not only ensured the survival of Dover Castle, but also struck a decisive blow against the French invasion. With the lifting of the siege, the defenders of Dover Castle could finally take stock of their achievements and begin the process of rebuilding their shattered fortress. The memory of their ordeal, however, would be indelibly etched into the annals of history, serving as a powerful reminder of the steadfast spirit and unyielding resolve that had carried them through their darkest hour. The great siege of 1216 proved to be a watershed moment in the struggle for control of England. With the breaking of the siege, the tide of the conflict began to turn against the French invaders, as their once formidable alliance fractured and their grip on the English territories weakened. Prince Louis, his dream of seizing the English crown, slipping through his fingers, was ultimately forced to abandon his claim and return to France defeated and discredited. Meanwhile, the young King Henry III, still a child and lacking any real power, would rely on the counsel and guidance of his regents, including the Earl of Pembroke and Hubert de Burgh, to navigate the treacherous waters of medieval politics and stabilize his realm. In the years that followed, Dover Castle would continue to play a central role in the defence of England, serving as a bulwark against foreign aggression and a symbol of the indomitable spirit of the English people. The story of the Great Siege, however, would remain one of the castle's most enduring and iconic chapters, a testament to the courage, resilience, and determination of the defenders who had stood firm in the face of adversity. Dover Castle remains a popular destination for visitors from around the world, eager to explore its rich history and marvel at its imposing fortification. The castle, lovingly preserved and maintained, stands as a proud testament to the courage and resilience of the men who defended it during the Great Siege of 1216. Walking through the castle's courtyards, halls, and battlements, visitors can retrace the footsteps of the defenders and immerse themselves in the dramatic story of the siege. Interactive exhibits and guided tours provide fascinating insights into the lives of those who fought and lived within the fortress, shedding light on the incredible hardships they endured and the unwavering spirit that saw them through their darkest hour. Today. Dover Castle not only serves as a monument to its storied past, but also as a reminder of the power of human resilience and the enduring bonds of camaraderie and loyalty that can be forged in the crucible of conflict. The legacy of the Great Siege of 1216 continues to resonate, inspiring generations of visitors to reflect on the sacrifices made by the defenders and the timeless values they upheld. The Great Siege of 1216 and the defiant stand of Dover Castle's garrison represent a seminal moment in English history. Their unwavering resilience and determination, in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds, not only saved a strategic fortress, but also altered the course of the wider conflict, and played a significant role in shaping the future of the nation. Through their indomitable spirit and staunch loyalty, these men not only etched their names into the annals of history, but also created a powerful legacy that continues to resonate today. The story of the Great Siege of 1216 serves as a timeless testament to the capacity of the human spirit to endure and overcome even the greatest of challenges, and stands as a shining example of the power of hope, unity, and determination in the face of adversity. 
As we delve into the past and explore the dramatic story of the Great Siege, we are reminded not only of the courage and fortitude displayed by the defenders, but also of the universal themes that resonate through the ages, the bonds of friendship and loyalty, the tenacity of the human spirit, the importance of standing firm in the face of seemingly insurmountable obstacles. It is through the examination of such pivotal moments in history that we can gain a greater understanding of our own strengths, our shared heritage, and the timeless values that continue to guide us today. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Saving Castles podcast. Stay tuned for our next episode where we'll continue to explore the fascinating world of castles and chateaus. Don't miss out and subscribe to our podcast to get notified when new episodes are released. For more information about us and our work, visit savingcastles.com. Thank you for listening.